Hello, and welcome to the second part of this episode of the SOLIDWORKS Composer Quick Start Guide. Last time, we explained and demonstrated the uses of the Translate and Exploded View tools. In this video, we're going to create an exploded view of a portion of this bench grinder. So let's take a look at the right side of this assembly. I'm going to create a default view and just name it Default. That way we can revert to this original orientation if we make any changes we don't like. Then we need to select all the individual parts that make up this right portion. So I'll select the remaining screws. And now with every piece selected, we can create a selection set. I'll just call it right portion. Now I'm gonna right click our selection in the viewport and select Show Selection and Hide Others. As you can see, this hides all the pieces we don't have selected while zooming in on the ones that we do. Now we have a good close-up view of the right portion of our assembly. However, there's still more we can do to break it down. What you do from here will vary based on what your assembly is. But here, I think it would be helpful if we showed how this shield assembly attached to the right portion. So, I'll go to the left panel and click the Assembly Selection Mode button. This makes it so that if I select an assembly, it treats it as one object instead of a group of pieces. Now I'll select the Shield Assembly and go to the Translate function so I can move it away from the piece. We'll move it to an appropriate distance. Right there looks good. And now, We'll go Author, Path, Create Associative Path from Neutral. And really quickly, we've created a clear view of how this shield assembly attaches to the larger portion. Now, let's take a look at these screws and how they help attach the various pieces of this subassembly together. So, because we're going to deal with parts, I deselect assembly selection mode. And then I go and select the screws from the menu on the left. I make sure to refresh their neutral position since we're going to want to use associative paths to track their change. Then I translate them outward and select the associative path function. Now I can translate out the cover, leaving ample room for the grinding wheel, which I'll translate out now. We can also change the properties of these paths so that they look better in the diagram. Some examples of the properties that we can change include color, thickness, the pattern, how they sit, whether in the foreground or in the background. Let's try making some of these changes now. I'll select all the paths. I'll control click the last one. And then I'll go to the left pane where I'll select properties. I'm going to change the width to 0.5, I'm going to change the color to gray, and I'm going to uncheck the box stay on top. So now you can see that if a line lies behind a piece, it actually sits behind the piece now. So now our lines look better, but there are still additional tools we can use to add clarity to this diagram. Let's add some labels. If you select the label tool, start by clicking the piece that you want to label and then click the area where you want the label to go. The label tool will actually pull information it already knows about the pieces to give it a name. You can see that for some of these pieces, these names turn out well. The right hand guard, the wheel, the right hand cover, and the shield mount all have appropriate names. The screws name is a little bit long. We can change this in the properties tab. Simply go to the text field, select string, and now we can manually input whatever we want our label to say. We can change it in the menu here, or open up a separate window to see it edited in real time. Let's just call this screw. Then we'll hit insert property.
So just like that, we've created a really easy to understand breakdown of the right portion of our design. We'll create a view so that we can refer to this exploded view whenever we want. And you can see here how easy it is to switch between our original orientation and the exploded view of the right portion. We hope you found this video helpful. As always, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check the forums and blogs for great additional Composer content. Next time, we're going to be talking about the Digger tool and how it can be used to add additional detail to your views. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.